Hello, good morning everyone. I'm happy to be here today. Before presenting the state of progress of the hydrogen sector in France, I'd like to give you some facts about the attractiveness of our country. So first, uh, for the third consecutive year, France is the first country to host foreign investment in Europe in 2021. Then, France welcomed a record number of projects according to EY Barometer, up 24%. France ranks first in Europe for hosting industrial activities as well as, as, well as for R&D. In France, we offer the best research tax credit, CIR, in Europe, up to 30% of the R&D expenditure. We have a world-class infrastructure and Europe's densest transport networks. France is the second largest European economy with over 500 million consumers accessing to the European market. With 1 million engineers, France is the European country with the largest number of skilled workers. There was recently a significant reduction in corporate tax from 33% in 2017 down to 25% in 2022. And finally, recently we had the launch of a 100 billion uh, euros relaunch plan to support production, transform infrastructure and invest in training. That's very important. That will further strengthen France's competitiveness and contribute to the support of foreign investment projects. Finally, I would like to thank the entire Business France team for its indispensable, indispensable support to the success of this mission and the members of the French delegation. So I'm here to talk about hydrogen mobility in France. Um, and I could say hydrogen mobilities in France. In France, there are several clusters and associations. At the top, uh, and in contact with the ministers, France Hydro Hydrogen, and Mobility Hydrogen France, the mobility branch of France Hydrogen. They are dedicated to hydrogen. Then, the cluster Pôle Véhicule du Futur, Pôle Vehicle of the Future, uh, that is techno-neutral. We address all technologies uh, depending on each use case. And we advise and we help our members. And we address hydrogen for mobility and all other uses, such as stationary applications, energy grid, and also industry decarbonation. This is a complete value chain. Sorry, it's in French. But what is important to, to catch is that in France, we have a complete value chain from the production to the log logistics of the hydrogen to the end use. A few years ago, there was almost no support from the government because hydrogen was important but not a strategic priority. Things changed in 2018 with a first national plan, 100 million euros. Now it seems quite little, but in 2018, it was a very uh, strong uh, signal for all the sector. Then two years later, in 2020, the uh, French hydrogen plan was increased up to 7.2 billion euros public funding. This is not the total funding for private sources and public sources. This is only the public funding. And about one year later, about two additional billion euros of public funding for very important projects I will speak later. And recently, uh, at the beginning of March 2022, 
very large projects were notified, were selected in France. So the hydrogen strategy in France, first, the goal is to accelerate the ecological transition and also to create a dedicated industrial sector. And there are three main objectives. First is related to hydrogen production through electrolyzers with a target of 6.5 gigawatts in 2030 installed in France. The second target is to develop clean mobility, especially for EV vehicles. And the uh, third objective is to build in France an industrial sector that creates jobs and guarantees our technical and technological mastery. Here you have some uh, figures. In 2030, the light vehicles, the target it is 300,000. For heavy vehicles, such as buses, trucks, the target is 5,000. About the trains, the target is 250, uh, the boats 1,000, and the hydrogen refueling stations, it's 1,000. Currently, we are on the roadmap to succeed in those targets, but 2030 is not yet, so we have to carry on pushing a lot. This is the uh, project I mentioned before. This is important projects of common European interest. In Europe, the different member states are not allowed to uh, provide funding over a certain uh, threshold. But in this case, when the, important is pro uh, the project is very important for Europe, Europe uh, selected some projects where each member state can overpass largely the uh, maximum uh, usual amount. And so this is uh, a list of projects uh, that were listed, officially listed in France and that were selected. So we have a first list of fif uh, 15 um, uh, important projects of common Euro European interest. And this is just a first wave. A second wave is still in the pipe, but we have to find uh, uh, first the money and then uh, are they really uh, important and priority for Europe and France. Now let's move to hydrogen production. I'm here to talk about mobility. But mobility for the moment in France, but also all over the world, the offer in terms of vehicles is not really available. And the uh, hypothesis that is made is that industry decarbonation projects in the next three to five years will drive up the uh, hydrogen production uh, with projects all over France uh, between two, uh, 200 and 500 megawatts and also uh, up to one gigawatt. And they will be connected through pipelines. Compared to uh, current uh, hydrogen refueling stations that are in operation or that are under construction, the uh, power is from two to five megawatts. Uh, that means uh, less than one ton every day, uh, up to two tons. So there is a ratio of 100 between current mobility uh, consumption and uh, industry decarbonation uh, uh, consumption. And so the hypothesis we can make, the future is not, uh, is not sure, but is that in, the, uh, in this decade, the uh, projects, uh, vehicle projects will be uh, developed, vehicles will be available, and after 2030, there will be a very uh, rapid ramp up of vehicle, uh, hydrogen vehicles uh, deployment, and then their hydrogen consumption. The goal of this scale-up in, in hydrogen production is the uh, decrease of the hydrogen cost for every kilogram. Uh, 
I saw that uh, in Korea uh, at the refueling station, the price is between uh, maybe uh, 7,000 7, uh, won to uh, maybe 9,000 uh, 9, won. It's very cheap compared to France. There is about a, a factor two. Uh, because uh, in France, we don't uh, plan to use uh, grey or blue hydrogen for the moment. It's historical and strategic decisions that explains this situation now. Uh, but uh, I think your uh, strategy is very interesting because uh, hydrogen cost is not an issue, to my opinion. And then uh, hydrogen vehicles make sense in terms of operation uh, use. Um, and also the other uh, idea is to reduce the capex. Uh, that means the uh, vehicle cost and also the fuel cell system cost, if we talk about the fuel cell. Uh, and uh, the uh, production, uh, fuel cell system production scale up from some hundreds or from some thousands every year up to uh, hundreds of thousands will reduce the cost and then make uh, hydrogen uh, vehicles really competitive. In France, there is also a question about the centralized or decentralized infrastructure and also the, how you deploy hydrogen refueling stations. So uh, my opinion is that there will be both. Uh, there will be such uh, highways of hydrogen via pipelines in France to transport large quantities of hydrogen. And then, in addition, there will be either uh, daughter stations without inside production, but uh, using a tube trailer uh, hydrogen, and also inside production via electrolyzer. And also, um, in France, the idea is, uh, the theory is to have only green hydrogen. For the moment, it's not the case. And also, green uh, energy coming from re renewables is not available at the uh, threshold, at the level needed. So, there will be sure a mix between renewables, will, between nuclear, and maybe grey hydrogen even if it's not something that makes people enjoy a lot. I think it's a good uh, hydrogen source mix to scale up the uh, end use because of competitivity reasons. On the, on the right, you can see uh, uh, s uh, a certain configuration with a main, uh, main infrastructure with inside production and then secondary small hydrogen refueling stations. That's something that uh, people uh, think about. About hydrogen use in mobility, there are different vehicles and uh, maybe uh, we can consider not only fuel cell systems but also combustion engines, uh, retrofitting and also turbines. So, uh, in Korea, as I can see in this uh, h 2 meet, but also in France, we have a wide range of uh, vehicle types, both for on-road or off-road. Um, for sure, uh, we can see uh, the Nexo, you well know, in uh, Korea, but also there are projects for utility vehicles in Stellantis, uh, previously Peugeot, Citroën, Fiat, etc. Then Ivia, it's a, a joint venture between Renault and Plug Power. And also uh, buses, uh, intercity uh, coaches, waste trucks, and trucks like Hyundai trucks. And also Gossin, which uh, belongs to the French delegation and was here today. Um, I could mention many other projects for excavators, for planes, for boats. Uh, and what I, I really like is this uh, motorbike. It's a racing motorbike uh, with a hydrogen fuel cell. This is not the final goal. This is only the demonstration that in the ultimate constraint of mass and volume of a hydrogen fuel cell, of a high power hydrogen fuel cell, 
we can succeed to integrate it in a small vehicle. And this has consequences for other types of vehicles, such as uh, small planes, uh, small boats, any small but powerful vehicle. And this, this vehicle uh, will have the same performance uh, than a, a GP a motorbike. Here is a list, I won't read everything, but it's important for you uh, to see what are the hydrogen mobility aids. Um, there are fiscal uh, uh, strategies, uh, there is a green purchase bonus, and there is uh, an investment aid for the projects uh, in terms of ecosystems. In France, we develop hydrogen uh, via ecosystems between hydrogen production and distribution and vehicles. And it's the well-known story of chicken and egg. And so you, you can find uh, the, uh, the amount here. I let you read uh, because the presentation is available. Uh, fuel slides about uh, current status of uh, deployments for the buses. There are uh, lots of uh, hydrogen buses in France, either already deployed, either under deployment. And uh, we can see that it's uh, well spread all over France. And uh, hydrogen buses is something uh, very uh, uh, with a, a good business model. So it's a good application, and to my opinion, and if this happens, this is a good uh, idea. In Europe, there is a small overview in the different uh, member states. In terms of trucks, uh, for the moment, there is not a lot of trucks available on the market, but there is Hyundai in Switzerland, and there are other uh, manufacturers, truck manufacturers, that are leading projects for a few vehicles at the beginning and then the scale up. This will mainly happen between 2025 and 2030. About waste trucks development deployment projects, there are also several projects, uh, mainly by cities, because uh, when a city uh, uh, buys um, hydrogen buses, they often uh, study the hypothesis of uh, hydrogen waste trucks. For hydrogen buses, the price compared to diesel version or electric version is quite competitive. For waste trucks, it's more difficult. Uh, because uh, there is not so many uh, waste trucks with hydrogen and the cost is still very high compared to the diesel version. So it's more difficult for waste trucks for the moment than for buses that are spreading rapidly. Uh, there is a very important question in France and probably uh, ab abroad, um, which is how to convert hydrogen in an hydrogen vehicle. You can choose a fuel cell system. This is the uh, most common projects. But also you can use combustion engines. This is a topic that is uh, largely studied since two years in France. And uh, we can see uh, nowadays recent announcements from Alpine, uh, Formula One in France, from Porsche, and uh, many uh, manufacturers, both for road, use or racing applications. And the question is not to define which solution is better than the other. The question is which, what is the best solution for this application? And we probably can consider uh, the total cost of ownership in terms of initial, initial purchasing cost and operating cost. And uh, for uh, certain vehicles, fuel cell systems are very uh, uh, interesting for uh, efficiency reasons. And in some applications, this is fuel cell, uh, this is uh, combustion engines that are really more interesting because of efficiency, uh, especially in large and uh, heavy load engines. So this is a short comparison uh, on different criteria between fuel cell and uh, internal combustion engine. This was done for a race car in, uh, in uh, endurance such as uh, 24 Heures of Le Mans, but uh, it could be valid for any, any other application.
to decide whether a solution is better or the other. So, sorry, it's in French. The idea is now how to define, if I develop a project, what is the good solution? Either a fuel cell, either an uh, internal combustion engine with hydrogen, a battery, electric vehicle, if this is uh, suitable, or other uh, combustions like alternative fuels or ammonia for very large industrial and mining uh, powertrain. For sure, hydrogen, the advantage compared to zero emission battery electric vehicles is the charging uh, delay and also the, uh, 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 the autonomy. So let's move to the conclusions. In terms of production, uh, there is a massive and semi-centralized deployment plan between large centralized uh, uh, devices via electroly electrolyzers and also uh, smaller uh, production uh, systems in uh, refueling stations. There is, uh, for the moment, uh, free electrolyzer gigafactories in France, uh, and uh, they are all members of PVF. Um, and uh, also, there is a, a mix between renewables and nuclear, because renewables won't be able to fulfill the need for green, uh, for energy to, for the electrolysis in 2030. In terms of distribution, uh, refueling stations are not being a real issue nowadays. Everyone is willing to produce hydrogen and uh, everyone uh, can uh, invest in a station. But uh, for the moment, uh, vehicles availability and cost are the main problem. Um, but a lot of projects are, uh, in, uh, are being developed and as I said, between 2025 and 2030, the things will change rapidly. In terms of use, uh, industry decarbonation will really scale up and drive hydrogen production. Mobility is starting and massive scale up will occur, should occur, after 2030. And large components manufacturing projects are on the way, both for electrolyzers and fuel cells and etc. In terms of partnerships, many partnerships were already uh, announced and uh, developments in hydrogen are very fast. We really think that we need to work together with uh, states like Korea. France is a very well positioned country and very attractive, as I told initially. And the delegation of French entities here is very open to partnerships to accelerate together. Now, a brief overview of the French participants. There is Automobile Club de l'Ouest, organizer of the 24 Heures of Le Mans, a worldwide known uh, race uh, in, uh, in that occurs in France. Regional Economic Agency of Burgundy Franche Comté, Gossin for uh, Port Logistics, Hydrogen Advisor, a worldwide experimented uh, advisor, me for Cluster Pool Vehicle of the Future, SNCF, the railway company in France, and SNESI. Now I will give the floor to Raphael Schengen, Head of Hydrogen Advisors.